So the first speaker uh, today is Jesse Huang from UIUC, who will talk about variation of FLTZ skeleton. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for the introduction. And uh, so I'll be talking about a particular kind of family of skeleton uh, whose fiber lives in the cotangent bundle of the real torus. And this is inspired by uh, studies of derived category of um, coherent sheaves on the GIT quotients. Uh, this is actually very well known uh, in algebraic geometry. And one particular case was studied by Halpin Leisner and Sam in their paper in 2016. And uh, so our goal um, you know, in, in this work is to kind of mirror uh, this, you know, this window uh, category construction. And uh, it turns out that uh, the category that we're looking for uh, can be realized as a skeleton. And uh, yeah, so that's, so that's the, the point. And uh, so this work is joined with Peng Zhou and uh, the preprint pre -print is actually on our cut right now. Uh, I should say, since this is a common name, so this is Peng at, uh, currently at Berkeley right now. Uh, so, all right, so what kind of skeleton are we interested in? So local, the local picture of it, at least, uh, looks, like, um, looks like the following skeleton. So we're gonna look at a poset, any poset uh, in the power poset of the set of n elements, and we're gonna build a skeleton out of it uh, from the singular support of the region that looks like an open region that looks like the following. So we're put in a condition um, that requires the ith coordinate uh, to be positive for little i, not in capital I, uh, for each i in the poset. And you know the singular support, so this is the Lagrangian, um, is gonna, so the union of it is gonna give you a skeleton and uh, the skeleton will live in T star of R to the N. So, um, it may not be very intuitive um, just by looking at the definition. So here's an example of what the PIs uh, look like. So when n equals a two, we're just looking at the picture of R2. Um, so if you take the empty set, um, you know, every element in um, every, like, so one, two, and one, two, um, they're all like sets. Uh, that are different from the empty set. So, um, so we can look at all the possibilities. And uh, so if you just take the empty set alone, um, nothing, so like none of the two coordinates will be free uh, and you're requiring everything to be positive. So we're looking at the positive quadrant um, and the singular support of that is going to be the exterior co-normal um, of this kind of closed, uh, of this closed cone. Um, so, right. And now we, we can also take I to be, curly I to be um, consisting of like set, um, sorry, what we can take the, um, the set to be, it's the set one or the set two or the set one, two, and we can say P1. Um, well, if you really think about it, P1 is just the upper half plane and P2 uh, will be the right half um, plane and P12 is the entire R2. So, so we're, we're taking the union, uh, we're taking like, you know, some combinations of this type of skeletons. And uh, yeah, so, right. So as you know, the experts uh, might have noticed uh, this skeleton that we just introduced um, like it's slightly different from the uh, FLTZ uh, construction, the you know co coherent co like co the well-known uh, construct mirror skeleton construction to toric varieties. Um, so here's a difference. Uh, well, actually, the um, the skeleton that we considered uh, recovers uh, the definition of FLTZ skeleton when the poset that we take is the indexing poset of a simplicial fan. So, so if the post set is actually the indexing set of a simplicial fan, um, one can check that this rectilinear skeleton we considered uh, coincides with the FLTZ uh, skeleton. So 
Um, yeah, so one notable difference here is that uh, for FLTZ skeletons, um, so we can take we can take a look at the picture when n equals to two, like the R two picture. There are only five possible, uh, you know, FLTZ construct FLTZ skeletons constructed from uh, symplosial fans, namely, you know, the zero section, the union of uh, of the two lines, and each individual line, and uh, you know, also this this kind of full skeleton uh, where, you know, there is also uh, this, this piece of skeleton over the origin. And uh, yeah, but the combination of uh, these skeletons will look, uh, well, we'll have other possibilities. For example, you can have like a V-shaped thing like this alone, or uh, you can have a Y-shaped thing if you take the union of these two. So, so there's, so there's more possibilities. As I said, um, the upshot of this talk is to build a non-characteristic family of skeletons. Um, uh, we over, we've already seen that uh, you know we can get the uh, near construction of a torque variety from a sub, like from the rectilinear skeleton we introduced, and uh, sometimes um, you know when you have a linear map. So sometimes you can have a very good situation when uh, when you have a linear map and the skeleton maps, uh, you know, you, the linear map is going to give you some, like, you know, it, it's going to realize the skeleton as a family of skeleton uh, in T star R, where the fiber lives in T star R to the K. And uh, in very, very good situations, of course. Um, and this type of situation we're considering uh, you know, is is this um, this kind of non-characteristic family where uh, the sheaf diamond category on the fiber, uh, meaning the weakly constructible uh, sheaf category with respect to the skeleton, uh, are all equivalent. So, and this is what Mather would call a uh, non-characteristic family. So, so this idea. So this is a so this is a very good phenomenon, um, and we're going to use this phenomenon to geometrically interpret uh, non-equivariant FLTZ skeleton mirror to derived equivalent uh, Clavial toric varieties uh, under variation of GIT quotient, like very simple ones. And the idea um, is inspired from the algebraic side, of course, and there is this window category construction in geometric invariant theory, and this is the good condition that we're uh, we have to keep in mind. So under this quasi-symmetric condition, this is like a particular type of Calabi-Yau uh, condition. Um, the window category can be constructed by picking the generators, uh, like, and there is a combinatorial construction that gives you a zonotope in R to the K, and the window category uh, is essentially constructed from the, like the structure of the zonotope and the lattice points uh, within the zonotope. So this is a very nice thing. And we, we want to build from literally the same kind of combinatorial data. Um, and we build a skeleton from there that does the interpolate. Okay, the setting, uh, is quasi-symmetric setting, as I just said, is defined as follows. So currently, I'm just I'm not really looking at any uh, real real meaning of these maps and stuff. So I'm just defining the combinatorial data. Um, so let's consider a surjective linear map um, from R to the n to R to the k, induced from a lattice map from z to the n to z to the k, and we you know we can we can think of this map as like an assignment of um, an assignment of a vector in R to the K to each uh, elementary like unit basis vector in R to the N. So this is gonna give you some sort of um, distribution of integral vectors in R to the K. And we say that this mu is Calabi-Yau if, uh, if, the, if the image, like if the sum of all the image vectors is zero and we say mu is quasi-symmetric if the sum is zero along each line. So. You know, apparently the second condition implies the first one, um, and also uh, we can think of the second condition as like the existence 
of a factorization of mu um, into like the composition of two maps where you have this intermediate space uh, consisting of this intermediate space uh, whose dimension equals to the number of lines. So you're just like separating, uh, you know, these lines, and eventually you get a you get a, like kind of a symmetric distribution. But uh, it's quasi symmetric because you, you know not every vector has like the opposite vector doesn't have to exist in this collection. So so this is the condition um, for our construction. And the, there is a key object coming out of um, this quasi-symmetric condition, namely that um, we can we can just take the mu image of the unit cube, um, actually half of it. The, this, you know, this this object um, is is a zonotope. Um, a zonotope is just like generally, it's just um, the projection image of a of a cube, or like, you know, a rectangle. Um, so we consider this zonotope given by the mu image of the unit cube and the generic shift of, shift of it. Um, and this generic condition we specify um, is to make it like to make the boundary it, the boundary of the zonotope not intersect um, the integral lattice. So you know we can we can imagine that this zonotope is shifted to a generic position so that like all the lattice points are within the interior and we call uh, the collection of lattice points in the interior a window. So here's, you know, some, here's like one uh, prototypical typical example uh, to keep in mind for this kind of construction. Uh, this picture is gonna actually serve as our base space where the, you know, where the family of skeleton lives. So the picture on the left is the weight distribution. So mu is going to be from R6 to R2, uh, where we send the basis vectors to all these beta i's. And it's quasi-symmetric because you know, along each line, you have like for each vector, along each line, you have the opposite vector. Um, and if you do the calculation of uh, the sonotope, it's going to be uh, this hexagon. Uh, this picture is actually not perfectly clear, but if you look carefully enough, um, you know, this is actually uh, the zonotope shifted to a generic position, or like you have generically, if you shift, like imagine shifting this hexagon, you will have three points within the interior, and these three points will be the window points. All right, just a word on the GIT. Uh, so we just gave a um, combinatorial construction of everything. So what is what does all this mean? Um, so the beta i's that we get um, can be thought of as like a, a weight of a k-dimensional torus action on uh, the n-dimensional affine space. And we're essentially just looking at a GIT problem where we have this algebraic torus acting on this affine variety. And, um, you know, and the like r to the k can be thought of as the lattice of this uh, of this tor, sorry, the like the character lattice of the torus tensoring with R, and the GIT parameter. Because we're looking at the GIT problem, there's going to be a GIT parameter that lives in uh, R to the K, and R to the K has this wall and chamber decomposition. And we pick, if we pick different L from each chamber, you know the GIT quotients we get will be uh, birationally, uh, like what. There will be birational cohorts, sorry, birational uh, morphisms uh, between among these things, and you know the quasi-symmetric, the quasi-symmetric condition guarantees that uh, these toric varieties that we get will be derived equivalent to each derived equivalent to each other, um, and the theorem uh, that we mentioned at the beginning by Halpern, Eisner, and Sam says that if you just you know that here is kind of like where the magic comes from, so. If you look at the window point, um, you know because this is a character lattice, so each window point is going is literally like a character. So a character corresponds to a, an equivariant line bundle. So you can just look at the subcategory of the derived category of uh, of this kind of quotient stack or the equivariant derived category generated by these line bundles uh, corresponding to the window point. Then 
uh, if you apply I upper star to any any generic semi stable locus, um, you know, this is going to give you an equivalence that computes the uh, Dorab coherent sheaf category of the GIT quotients. So this is a very nice theorem. Um, and just like one more thing about uh, the the chamber decomposition. So in the, this quasi symmetric case, um, the the GKZ fan or like the secondary fan or the GIT fan, you know, that gives you um, that gives you the variation of GIT quotient that um, or that gives you that gives you the decomposition R to the K uh, is actually given by the hyperplane arrangement parallel uh, to the facets of the of the zonotope that we constructed. So this is a very nice property, uh, and we're we're gonna. Um, I, sh I should also say that uh, so there is a lot of combinatorial uh, properties of the of this stonotope that we can exploit to get a lot of nice structures, and uh, so the idea to mirror all of this uh, is just to build a skeleton over R to the K, uh, whose fiber lives in uh, T star T to the minus K, uh, or actually you know you you actually have to mod out by the kernel of the lattice map to to make your fiber skeleton actually live in the torus, but um, most of the time we just look at the uh, universal cover picture, uh, which is easier to understand. So, right, so we want to build a skeleton over this space. So they're roughly like over each chamber, we get the semi-stable FLTZ skeleton mirrored to these uh, torus varieties. Okay, so what is the construction then? Um, what we do is actually very simple. Um, so we just take the constructible correspondence um, images of these window objects. So for each point, uh, we just take this, um, this kind of sheaf supported um, on the closure, this, you know, this, this kind of structural sheaf of the open region, um, like open positive uh, coordinate cone, I should say, um, and take the union we just lift it up to R to the N, lift up window points to R to the N, and take the union of the, all the singular supports of these objects, mod out by M, and this will construct a skeleton in um, T star R to the N mod M, and this is like isomorphic to T star, uh, T, star uh, T to the N minus K cross R to the K. Um, so this is where this skeleton live. Um, and this skeleton is going to be uh, doing the interpolation job that uh, I mentioned at the beginning. So, um, but like, yeah, okay. So before I get into um, the main theorem, so here's like one thing that uh, that is slightly different from the algebraic construction. Um, so we have to thicken uh, the wall. We have, we have to thicken the walls to actually get what we want. Um, by that, we mean um, because the window skeleton is constructed from these points um, and the, the whole skeleton, you can just think of like as um, something extrapolated from like from these window regions, right? And actually uh, we, um, you know, the, the union of that, that like window skeleton as a union of all these singular support extrapolated from the window region actually sees, um, you know, all the structures within, like the, the FLTZ structure within each chamber. So the thick wall, uh, you know, because, because quasi-symmetry gives you this hyperplane arrangement that coincides with the GKZ fan, we can just thicken, um, thicken the wall. Uh, so thicken the wall, uh, the GKZ walls, by, by the zonotope itself in the generic position. And this will give you like uh, some thickened walls. Uh, we'll have, we'll, we'll show some pictures later, but like, you know, you, you just have the thick walls kind of extended from, from the zonotope parallel to the boundary components or parallel to the, like, to the faces of the zonotope. And then um, the complement are still some chambers and this is actually the decomposition that we have. Um, so, you know, I'm just gonna jump ahead um, just to illustrate what the thick walls uh, look like. So the, the blue region will be the thick wall. Uh, 
And the complement consists of six chambers. And this is like the space where um, the skeleton lives uh, for this arc, you know, for, for this example, hexagon example. And we just take uh, kind of the singular support um, of the pre-images of these points and the skeleton spreads out. So it's kind of amazing. Um, and the proof of this theorem is actually not very hard. We just have to inspect the local rectilinear skeleton um, using just the characterization of stability and some combinatorial properties of the, of the zonotope to get it. Um, here's a simpler example that we can fully draw. So uh, the window skeleton for uh, like for, for this map, for this map where you just take um, take E1 to one, take E2 to two, it's, you know, it's a map from R2 to R, um, corresponds to a C star action uh, on C2 whose weights are one and negative one. And here you just get you know, two possible GIT quotients and both are isomorphic to, to C. Uh, and here's the, the window skeleton. So the zonotope is gonna be an interval of length one. Um, and if you shift it to a generic position, the interior of the zonotope consists of one point. And so generically, so this is just a picture when you take delta equals negative one half, um, you just get one window point. But if you lift it up, we get these wedges and the wall and chamber decomposition is going to be like an interval and two rays. And on the left hand, we get the negative. So if the stability condition is like the, you know, is like a negative number or, or is on like is along the ray on the left, you take a slice here um, and mod out by the lattice, uh, you would get mirror to C, uh, which is this well known example. Uh, on the cylinder, where the skeleton looks like this. Um, on the right, you get the same thing, but here, if you just consider this skeleton as a whole thing over R, um, we get we get some interpolation, some non-characteristic interpolation. You literally don't see the difference over here. Uh, but if um, this delta is non-generic, uh, the skeleton picks up something extra within the thick wall, and uh, here you can see the fiber here uh, is, you know, it's still the same, but over the window region, it, you know, it kind of <clears throat> have like more, you have like more points on the boundary. If you think about it, like the, the contact boundary, there are two points instead of one. Okay. Um, and now you can like shift it more. Um, it will just essentially give you the same picture. So yeah, so those are our examples. And our final um, theorem is that uh, I think I almost mentioned it already. So for any L uh, in this R to the K, the restriction to the fiber skeleton uh, induces an equivalence of categories. So there is a restriction, restriction functor to the fiber that gives uh, an equivalence of categories on weakly constructible sheaves. And of course, we can take the compact objects, get the wrapped constructible sheaves, and that will be, uh, you know, the the actual mirror to the to the coherent sheaf category. Okay, so um, and for the moral, we can show that um, window the window object the window objects actually generate uh, this sheaf category of the window skeleton. Um, this is something we have to show because uh, well, only only one direction is is obvious just from the construction uh, using singular supports. The other direction is, uh, you know, we have to show something, but the proof of this um, is, is very similar to, um, to the algebraic proof of generation uh, given by Halp, Leisner, and Sam. And uh, as long as we have this um, and, uh, and the, you know, equivalence of the restriction functor uh, we literally just get uh, mirror sim we get like a universal uh, mirror symmetry for generic quasi symmetric toric GIT quotients constructed from taking like quasi symmetric quotient t, t to the n mod mod c star to the k for generic L. So 
So that's the theorem. Um, and you know, the, the proof is actually uh, much harder than, uh, than the proof of, uh, of this theorem. Uh, how much um, more time do I have? Actually, you already run like five minutes. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah, I'm, but it's okay, yeah. Yeah, so but I, I guess I should stop here. The next two slides would essentially just be the summary of the proof of the non characteristic deformation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll maybe just, we can like, uh, stop yeah, okay. here and in case people are interested in the proof, we can look into the two slides. So let's yeah. send the speaker first again. Thank you for the. Thank you. And uh, are there any questions? We have uh, five minutes for the question. Yeah, let me jump to the theorem page. Maybe you could uh, use uh, a few minutes to explain the sketch of the proof. Uh, yeah, sure. So, uh, so at the beginning, I introduced the local picture. Um, so, so to prove that this is actually an equivalence, we need to we need to show the following. So, like, you know, before restricting those fibers, it's better to just look at an like a small open neighborhood around um, each lattice point upstairs, and uh, so we need to show that like like if you view this sheaf diamond category as a sheaf of categories. Then we need to show the course like restriction functor and the left adjoint of it um, are both fully faithful, and this this will imply that the restriction is is an equivalence. Um, and we we're going to inspect the uh, these functors just in this local picture, and actually all the possibilities we get um, you know can be described by this rectilinear skeleton picture. Um, and to calculate this local skeleton, we need to actually, uh, we need to do, so we, we need to, we need to show, uh, we need to have like a very simple way to, uh, to understand the, like the co-representative of a stock functor from each of the, each of the region divided by, you know, these coordinate codes. And, uh, yeah, so like this, this pulse at I gives you the structure of the skeleton lambda curly I. The resolution, there's actually a huge resolution given by the order complex of it. And, um, but that this resolution is not good enough. So this is some sort of a check resolution, but this is not good enough um, for actual calculation of like, you know, proving that the window is actually a window. Um, so we, we need to simplify this. And the, simplifi the simplification happens uh, over this intermediate level that we considered. Um, so what we did is that we basically, we basically obtained uh, like a simpler resolution of these stock probe sheaves uh, in terms of like intersection patterns between kind of the, sorry, I should say like, you should, you know, <laughs> This is really just Q inverse of delta. The intersection patterns uh, between Q inverse delta, like between these like cones, span span out from like these uh, span out from 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 this convex region, um, and like between this region and the thickened coordinate cones, um, you know, which <laughs> which maps to the window. Um, it's kind of like in this R2, you can just think of like the thickened coordinate cones as looking like something like this. And uh, downstairs, it will look like something like this. And so there will be some translation of, um, you know, like of the geometry and topology of, um, you know, these intersection patterns. Um, and you get a you get an order you get a simpler order complex out of it um, that that gives you like a formula for the resolution of fi um, for general i and uh, yeah 
and like the proof of core restriction, which is the hardest part, is to to describe the support of this uh, of this FI uh, using this resolution. Um, you describe the support of it away from uh, the like the the region of the stock you're taking from, and uh, and to relate that to uh, the shape, the actual shape of the skeleton. So in in the symplectic language. This, this FI is, is basically just like, you know, you're wrapping, so you have a skeleton, you're wrapping the cotangent fiber until you can't wrap it anymore. And there will be some regions it occupies. And, uh, you know, if you take like the intersection with another cotangent fiber, you know, there will be some, somewhere, it's not trivial, somewhere it's trivial, you have to specify uh, where, um, you know, this, where like you will have like non-trivial wrapped homology. So, uh, yeah, maybe it's a good time to wrap up because we are we need to start the second talk. So